Emotions are like the wild horses of the mind. Their untamed power can lead to chaos. But when guided with wisdom, they can carry us to great heights. The Buddha gathered his disciples, ensuring his words were not just heard but felt. To master one's emotions is not to suppress them. For suppression is like holding a ball underwater. It will eventually rise with uncontrollable force. Instead, observe each emotion with mindfulness, as you would a passing cloud, and you will find the strength to choose your path with clarity. In this practice, the Buddha continued, You are neither the emotion nor the turmoil it may bring. You are the sky, vast, open, untouched by the clouds that drift through it. The disciples, absorbing his words, understood that this teaching was not just about control, but about liberation from the grip of anger, the depths of sorrow, and the disruption of unrest. They sat in quiet contemplation, ready to learn the way of emotional mastery through the art of Zen. As the Buddha's disciples leaned in, eager for wisdom, he began to weave a tale of a great king and a Zen master. In a kingdom not far from where we sit, he narrated, there lived a king whose temper was as infamous as his power. His word was law, and his wrath, the fire that could reduce his court to ash. Yet this very temper began to erode the foundations of his realm, sowing fear and distrust amongst his people. One day, after a fit of rage that led to the unfair punishment of an innocent servant, the king was left alone in the echo of his own fury. Seeking solace and a balm for his volatile spirit, he sought the guidance of a Zen master known for his tranquil presence. The king arrived at the humble abode of the master as the sky blushed with the first light of dawn. The master, sitting in the simplicity of his garden, invited the king to sit beside him. Master, the king pleaded, my emotions rule me more than I rule my kingdom. I am a slave to my anger. Teach me to control this fire within. The master listened, his eyes reflecting the calm of the still pond before them. He then picked up a stone and tossed it into the water, shattering the glassy surface. Observe the water, the master said. It is like the mind. The stone, like your anger, disturbs its peace. The ripples are the echoes of your fury, reaching far and wide. Now watch as the ripples fade, the master continued. The water returns to its calm state. It does not retain the shape of the stone or the story of the disturbance. The king watched in silence as the pond stilled once more, the chaos of the ripples settling back into peaceful order. Your mind, like this pond, is reflective and calm by nature, the master explained. Your anger, the stone, is a temporary visitor. Do not build your identity around this visitor. Instead, focus on the stillness that follows. It is your true nature. The king left the master's garden with a heart lighter than when he had entered. The Buddha concluded, and so the king learned that the mastery of his emotions was not an act of suppression, but an act of observation and understanding. He found that the greatest ruler is one who rules himself first. With the story still fresh in their minds, the Buddha elucidated the lesson it held. Just as the king discovered through the Zen master's wisdom, the true control of emotions comes not from suppression, but from understanding their impermanent nature. Emotions, you see, are fleeting. They arise from conditions, and then they pass away, just like the ripples on the pond surface. To control them, the Buddha continued, we must first understand them. And to understand them, we must observe them without attachment or aversion. He encouraged his disciples to practice mindfulness when an emotion arises. Sit with it, observe it, ask yourself, what is this feeling? Where does it come from? What does it wish to teach me? By doing so, the Buddha explained, you learn to respond with wisdom rather than react out of ignorance. He reminded them, emotions are not your enemies. They are messengers that, when listened to with a calm and clear mind, can guide you to a deeper understanding of yourself and the world around you. The disciples nodded, taking the teaching to heart. They understood that the mastery of emotions was a path to freedom, a freedom that would allow them to navigate the tumultuous seas of life with grace and equanimity. The Buddha, 
seeing the understanding bloom on the faces of his disciples, offered them a practical application to embody the teachings. Let us now turn knowledge into practice, he said. Here is a simple yet profound exercise for when you find yourself in the grip of strong emotions. He guided them with a gentle voice. Find a quiet place where you can sit undisturbed. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. As you inhale, gather all your awareness. And as you exhale, imagine releasing the emotional tension you carry. Now bring to mind a recent event that triggered a strong emotional response in you. He continued. Observe the emotion as it arises within your body. Where do you feel it? Is it a warmth in your chest? A tightness in your throat? A heaviness in your stomach? Watch this emotion without judgment. You're not trying to change it, simply to understand it. As you continue to breathe deeply, visualize the emotion as a wave in the ocean. The Buddha instructed. It rises, peaks, and naturally falls away. With each breath, the wave becomes smaller until it's a gentle swell in the vast sea of your consciousness. Once the emotion is calmed, set an intention for how you wish to proceed with this knowledge. The Buddha concluded, How will you respond differently next time this emotion arises? By regularly engaging in this meditation, you will cultivate a peaceful heart and a mind capable of wise action. This is the art of emotional control. Seeing the transient nature of feelings and choosing the path of balance and compassion, he imparted this wisdom, knowing that through such practices, his disciples would develop the emotional resilience necessary to face life's challenges with a serene heart. Then the Buddha turned his gaze outward toward the horizon, where the sky kissed the earth and spoke softly, Now, dear disciples, I invite you to carry these teachings beyond the cushion of meditation and into the world. Reflect upon your emotions and how they influence your actions. Contemplate on moments when you were the master of your emotions and times when you were their servant. Consider this, he continued, how might your life change if you viewed your emotions as teachers? What wisdom can anger, joy, sorrow, or fear impart to you if approached with mindfulness and a willingness to learn? He encouraged his disciples to engage with these questions deeply and to share their insights with one another, creating a ripple of contemplation and support throughout the community. Emotional mastery is not the absence of emotions but the skillful harnessing of them. The Buddha concluded, Share your journey of mastering emotions in the comments below. Let us inspire and learn from one another. And if you wish to continue walking this path of inner discovery, subscribe for more teachings. Together, we will explore the vast landscape of the mind and unlock the serenity that lies within. With a gentle smile, the Buddha ended the session, leaving his disciples with a sense of purpose and a call to action. They understood that their experiences, shared in the spirit of growth and understanding, could serve as beacons for others on the path to emotional wisdom. As the disciples sat, absorbing the profound teachings of the Buddha, a palpable sense of introspection enveloped them. Each one contemplated their own emotional journey, recalling moments where emotions had led them astray or times when they had successfully navigated turbulent feelings with grace. One disciple with a furrowed brow recalled a recent incident where anger had surged within. It was a sudden outburst in response to a colleague's criticism. In that moment, the disciple realized the fleeting nature of anger how it arrived unannounced and dissipated just as swiftly. Now, reflecting on this, there was an awareness, a sense of observing that emotion without being consumed by it. Another disciple, with a thoughtful gaze, contemplated moments of joy and how fleeting they often seemed. The happiness derived from external sources, praise, achievement or material possessions, was momentary. But within those moments, there was a realization that true contentment arose from an inner source, beyond the transient highs of external circumstances. The teachings of the Buddha resonated deeply with each disciple, for they realized that emotional mastery wasn't about eliminating emotions, but understanding their impermanence. The practice was to observe, understand, and respond rather than react impulsively. With this realization, the disciples exchanged glances, a silent acknowledgement passing between them. It was a recognition of the shared journey they were on. 
a journey toward emotional resilience and wisdom. The atmosphere in the gathering shifted, becoming one of camaraderie and shared introspection. The Buddha's teachings had sparked a collective introspective exploration, and they felt a growing sense of unity in their pursuit of emotional mastery. In the quiet moments that followed, the disciples found themselves drawing inspiration from one another's reflections. It was in these exchanges that they realized the transformative power of sharing experiences and insights. Their discussions deepened, each disciple contributing a piece of their emotional puzzle, a story of triumph over anger, a moment of profound serenity amidst chaos, or the revelation of finding peace within themselves. The gathering became a sanctuary for shared wisdom and mutual understanding. Each word spoken was a step toward not just personal growth, but also a collective elevation of consciousness. In this space of shared contemplation, the disciples discovered that emotional mastery wasn't solely an individual pursuit. It was a journey they embarked on together, a path of mutual support, empathy, and enlightenment. As the discussions continued, the teachings of the Buddha echoed through their shared stories, offering guidance and illumination. The discourse became a tapestry woven with threads of introspection empathy, and profound insights. The disciples, in their shared pursuit of emotional mastery, discovered a wealth of wisdom not just from the Buddha's teachings, but from each other, a testament to the transformative power of collective introspection. In this atmosphere of shared reflection, they found solace, inspiration, and a renewed determination to navigate life's emotional landscapes with resilience, understanding, and compassion.